All right, so after my recent Avast Free Antivirus review video, I've been getting a lot of claims in the comments stating that the malware I used was really old, useless stuff, and therefore it didn't really produce a proper result. And this is not the first time I've heard these claims, so I wanted to clarify a few things here. My first reaction is just amusement, because how on earth did you know the age of the samples that I used? to such an extent that you were comfortable enough to blatantly state that in a comment that way. Because to be honest, even I do not know the age of all the samples that I used. I have some rough estimates, but that's about it. But since there are things floating around in the air, I thought I'd check out some facts. So I randomly picked a few files and uploaded them to VarsTotal, and we'll start looking at them to see how old they are. Before that though, let's get this straight. What does the age of a malware file mean? Does it mean the day it was created? But then again, I mean, the creation process can take months, sometimes years, you never know. Somebody might drop it, pick it up again. I can create a file and keep it to myself for years and then suddenly release it into the wild. So what counts as the age of a file? Is it when I start typing the code? Is it when I include the header files? Is it when I'm done with the main modules? There is no absolute way to determine that. So usually when we talk about malware files, we talk about age in terms of when the file was first seen. Of course, some samples are caught in development. And I have even made videos on that in case you're not following. But that's not a realistic scenario for testing antivirus software because a user isn't going to face threats that are currently in development. A user is going to face threats that are out there in the wild with the target victim in mind. So when it comes to age, we usually go by the date it was uploaded to some really popular malware repository. And the majority of you would be familiar with the website VirusTotal. So let's take a look at some of these files and how old they really are. So when we talk about the age of a file, what we usually mean is when it was first seen on VirusTotal. This is not an absolute metric, but it's one of the most reliable ones. Because this is one of the first places where people would upload a file. It uses all the major anti-malware or antivirus engines. And I think it's one of the largest repositories out there. So if a threat's in the wild, there is a very little time delay between it showing up on VirusTotal. So keeping that in mind, let's look at the date and time when some of the files that I used in the test were first seen. So here's one, malware507.exe. And when was it first seen? When I uploaded it. So this hash was first uploaded after the test when I decided to figure this out. But maybe I'm just cherry picking, right? Maybe I just intentionally found just one sample that was really new. Well, let's look at another one. Oh, wait, same thing. Malware458.exe. Huh. Ah, another one. Oh, wait, here's one more. I can do this all day. Of course, not all files have the same age. For example, this one is about a couple of days old. Now keep in mind also that the video was posted a couple of days ago. This was probably uploaded somewhere around the time when I made the video, but I wasn't the first person to do it, which is why you see a different file name. Here's another one, which was first seen about five days ago. Here's one that was seen a week ago. Here's another one that was seen a week ago. And one more. In my definition, all of this qualifies as recent malware. And this malware by no means is uh, trash. A lot of these are ransomware and you wouldn't want to be hit by these without protection. Here's my evidence. But what's the evidence provided by people claiming otherwise? Wait, those claims are unsourced. And the only evidence they claim to have is that Avast couldn't have possibly done so well with recent samples. So if you're going to come into a test with a pre-existing bias, and if something else happens, you're going to blame it on the samples rather than look at it objectively. 
I can't afford to do that because I'm a reviewer. I have to look at things objectively. I've been using the same kind of samples for a lot of tests. It's not that every product has just aced every single test. Then I'd maybe think about changing things up a bit. But recently, I have seen malware that's months old get past products that claim to be entirely behavioral based. No kidding. So products that claim to protect you from zero-day malware have even missed samples that are months old. Now having said that, I'm always looking for better opportunities to get new and active samples so that I can test products more thoroughly. I've been recently working with Malshare to add more and more of these sources to my list. And if you genuinely have something to contribute or you want to provide constructive criticism, I'm all yours. I really want to hear your opinion and I would love to have your help. But if your only objective is to point and laugh, well, joke's on you. And I'll be really honest here. I spend hours just collecting the samples for each test. It's not that I just download one particular pack from somewhere and job's done. I have to use multiple samples, I have to make a balance, I have to test it with second opinion scanners, make sure that there are not too many false positives before I actually use samples in a review. So yeah, this is kind of an unusual video, but I thought it's about time I made it. So once again, this is Leo. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.